Hi there, I'm author and freelance writer Melissa May Younger and I wanted to share with you today a little bit about how I do freelance writing. So basically, um, I started out doing freelance writing really as my job in 2019, two years ago. And when I started out, I started out on Upwork and it was it was a slow build just to set your expectations. <laughs> And basically, so I took on, I had taken on like a client or two before that point. Um, but that was while I was working like two other jobs. Um, and it, you know, there's also other things going on in life. And I really wasn't ready to commit to freelance writing full time because I honestly didn't know if it was going to work out or not. And it was kind of a risk. You know, it's always like, you know, the paycheck is more appealing in one sense because it's the job security. But uh, then when I moved to Chicago, uh, because my husband was starting his PhD program, then I decided that, hey, you know, I don't have a job anyways, so I'm just going to really try to make this work and see if I can because, you know, writing as my job has always uh, been a dream. Um, I was in ministry before that. And, you know, I enjoyed being in ministry, but I always was like, man, I wish I could write more, you know. So um, and, and right now I feel like, you know, I can always do different like church ministries like as I want to and as I'm able to participate in them. But like doing writing as my job has actually been very fulfilling to me. <laughs> And has very much felt like, you know, this is what I'm supposed to do and this is what I'm good at. If you're kind of like that, then, you know, listen to my story and maybe you can learn something that will help you if you're thinking about switching to full-time or even just part-time freelancing. So um, to get into it, basically, I took on this client who was willing to take a chance on me because I only had... At that point, I think two reviews on Upwork, they were both like five-star reviews. Um, and one of those I had taken, I, I worked my butt off for that because uh, basically there are some people on there on Upwork who will say, I'll give you a five-star review and I'll just pay you $10 if you do this big project for me. So I took one of those on. I ended up spending about 10 hours on that project for that person for $10 and then Upwork takes their fee, their 20% fee. So I walked away with $8, but I had my first five-star review. And honestly, that helps a ton on a platform like Upwork because if you have zero reviews, then people, like you're a risk, right? It doesn't matter. It, it almost doesn't matter what your resume is. Um, or how many different projects you ha glamorous projects you have to show on there. If you don't have any reviews, then people are less likely to choose to work with you. And actually, I think the algorithm also favors you if you've completed a job successfully. So anyways, that first job was like kind of a nightmare. But then I got this other job. I was writing these like basically skits for children's after school programs. And I had run an after school program. I had written skits for children before. So I had enough experience for that job. And honestly, I didn't charge that much for it. Probably today, I, I might charge a little bit more. Um, but I was just trying to get that experience and get those reviews on Upwork. So I kind of started with like, not like minimum wage-ish um, expectations because, you know, I had been in the workplace for a long time. Um, and so I started a little bit above that, I would say. Um, but then I, because I had those two reviews now, I was able to get an, a client in September, no, August of 2019. And that was like around the time that we were good, about to move. And that client had a lot of work for me. And so again, I didn't charge like my highest rates that like I don't charge. I didn't charge what I charge now. Right. I have a lot more experience now and I've been on the platform for a long time. 
I I charged um, I think probably an average of about twenty to twenty five dollars an hour. Um, I'm a pretty fast writer. They actually get a lot for their money. And I generally try to be as grammatically correct as possible the first on the first draft because of those things and because I had experience. You know that that was a fair place to start for me. I also have a bachelor's in English and I had done a bunch of writing on my own. I started out doing that and then I um, did started a blog in November and so that was another Another thing that I could just show clients, say, hey, look at my blog. They wanted me to write blogs. Um, it also showed it's a literature blog. So it also showed that I was well versed in literature and could easily understand it. And that actually led to me to get another job that was very good that was basically reading books and writing these Amazon blurbs and that sort of thing. Then after that, I I got this job that there's like a million like people who want you to write a romance novel. And they're like, okay, 80,000 words for, you know, like about a about thousand bucks. And when you are first starting out, that can sound appealing. But let me tell you, it is not worth it unless that is your like, what you love to write, okay? Because you're basically do- gonna end up like making not a lot of money per hour when you do it out. And the thing is that when people don't, like people who don't pay that much on Upwork, they they often sometimes have like the same level of expectation or higher of somebody who's like paying for an expert. So it's not like, you know, oh, I can just take this job and do this kind of like half-baked work for them or even like just do okay work because they're like expecting this this level of excellence and, and for you to really like break your back over this work and to put in all the time and energy and sometimes can't clearly articulate their expectations. And when you're talking about like 80,000 words, that's a problem. There has to be like this back and forth with the expectations. So I am t- speaking from experience because this was like a scarring, like first year experience for me where I wrote these 20,000 words for this person. And it was like, every time I wrote for them, they would come back, be like, oh, well, you know, this is not exactly what we wanted. We kind of wanted it this way a little bit or that way a little bit. And it was kind of like these vague comments um, that where they're not pointing out anything in what I've written. Okay. It's not like these specific editing notes, like change this section or develop this character more. It was these really vague comments. And they'd be like, oh, we're sure that you can make these changes. So we'll go ahead and approve the milestone and you can do the next 20,000 words. That was a mistake. Okay. Never go on in the project if the client doesn't seem happy with what you've done so far. Like you want to figure that part out first because it just led to like more confusion. Basically, like I ended up writing like 40,000, a little over 40,000 words for these people. And they didn't want to pay me for the the second 20,000 words because we did all this back and forth where I was like asking like a million clarifying questions and saying, well, you know, can you point out things in the text? Because I'm not sure I'm like understanding your feedback. And, and they, they were just, they just continued to be vague. And they said, well, we want you to just figure out the places in the text where this applies, you know? And I'm like, it's now 40,000 words. Uh, how am I supposed to go through and like figure out like the particulars of what you're wanting me to do? I mean, at the end of the day, they just didn't want to put in the time and they didn't want to pay me a lot. (laughs) And they just wanted me to like keep drafting for them until they liked it. And I was not willing to do that. So I was like, all right, you know what? You're not going to pay me for these. I'll lose that $200 so that I can just like walk away from this project and never have to deal with it again. So that's what I did. And of course, they left me not a good review on Upwork. And I did go in and um, because I had a a bunch of other good reviews, you can contest that you can just like have that review removed from your profile. That is the only bad review I ever got on Upwork. And it was because the client was just way too unreasonable. You just can't uh, burn yourself out over a project. I, I could have continued trying to draft what they want and never have gotten there. From then on, I was a lot more careful about the clients I took on. 
And I decided that I was going to make sure that I was really, really clear on the expectations at the beginning of the project. And then that I would have like smaller checkpoints along the way that I would keep checking in with the client because I wanted to make sure it was exactly what they wanted so I didn't ever get in that situation again. And that's worked out for me fairly well. The other cautionary tale I have is that there are some some clients out there who will, you know, they want you to do the work for them and they want you to get it to them quickly. Like with Upwork, they have like an escrow and you have to make sure that the money is in the escrow and, and that this person is really gonna pay you. Because what happens is, so sometimes they create a milestone. I didn't notice a couple times, like this person created a milestone that said they're gonna pay me X number of dollars, but they didn't actually put the money in there. Where that leaves you is if you, you can submit the work to them and then they might not get back to you and they and they might just go silent for a while and you send them like messages, like a couple messages a week. And then you're thinking like, is this person gonna pay me? And then you go to the, the escrow cause that's their, like on Upwork, that's their like kind of safeguard against freelancer not getting paid is the money's in the escrow, then you send the request and that automatically comes to you in seven days unless the client voids it. But if the money's not there, then you can't do that. And so if this, if this person decided that they don't want to pay you and you don't have a way to like track them down, which I did, I did that one time. I did track down a client like through their website and emailed them and just said, you know, basically because you haven't paid me, I own this thing that I wrote for you. You do not own it. And I just like articulated that. And I said, when you pay me, then you will own it. And it had been a long time since they like had gotten back to me and all that. I'd been sitting there for months waiting for this person to even just message me back. I, I tried to like phrase it in a way that was like nice or whatever. Um, and as it turned out, like this client was like, like first they said that they were on vacation and then they were like, oh, I was in a car accident and whatever. And I was kind of like, okay, but months okay you weren't you weren't like in a coma okay <laughs> they were not in a coma i'm not trying to be mean but um they weren't in a coma they could have messaged me back anywhere in there um they could have paid me if they felt that they should um so anyways i eventually got paid <laughs> which was good but then i just ended that that contract with that client and i was like i'm not going to work with that client again because at the end of the day, I could do work for them and they could decide not to pay me, right? They can also, the client can also, and on Upwork, I should say this, they can also decide not, they can put the money in the escrow and still deny you payment if it's not like exactly how you want it. So um, if you're not working with Upwork, if you're finding your own clients, um, in some ways that, that could be riskier but you might have more like details or contact information on them. You might know like what state they live in and stuff so that if you had to get into legal stuff with them, you could. But yeah, just, just to be warned that there are some people out there who like it's not really important to them to make sure that you get paid. So you really have to advocate for yourself and just keep hounding them and going after them. And it's unfortunate. Um, but that, all that being said, I feel like I'm sharing all the negative stuff first. Here's all the positive stuff. <laughs> okay. I love being a freelance writer because I can really make my own schedule. That's why I have this board behind me. I'm going to just show you. This is kind of like what I do each week. I put like, this is this week. I'll just write it out. And I just do. I just do like Monday, Tuesday, I do the whole week here, and then I'm going to just write like what I need to do. So I'll be like client X, sometimes I just write the client's name, or I'll if I have many projects going on for a particular client, I might put a project there, client X, project Y, right? Um, so I'll, I'll look at this and I'll say, okay, I know 
for Monday, that I'm going to work on this for client X, that for, for on project Y for my other client. Um, so I'll just kind of like keep the whole week organized. So as clients give me stuff to do, I'll just plug that in. Like depending on the due date, I always schedule to have it done like a day or two ahead of time so that if there are any last minute tweaks or if I'm like super tired that day, that I have like the extra day or two to kind of make sure that everything's good before I send it to the client because I want to be producing quality work. Um, and then like other, this is just like, um, other thing, other projects, my own personal projects that I want to get done this week. So like right now is NaNoWriMo. So I would put like, um, you know, I'm going to write each week. I'm trying to write like 7,000 words, right? And that's for, um, right now I'm writing, right now I'm writing The Cursed Ruins. Um, so I'll just put like, write 7,000 words up there. And then I'll just put other uh, projects I'm working on. You know, this, the AuthorTube channel will go up there. So I'll say like AuthorTube, two videos. And I'll just kind of list everything out. Um, I'll do it a little bit more neatly than I'm doing now because I'm like writing at an angle. Um, and, and then um, for tasks, this is just things like, you know, clean the floors because if I don't tell myself to do it, I will never do it. I'm not one of those people who like gets up one morning and is like, I'm going to clean my house because I just feel like it. You know, I'm I'm more of like this you know, I want to do all the projects and idea stuff and interesting stuff. I don't want to like do all the mundane stuff. So actually for today, today I'm going to cook the pot roast. And actually this is, this is too close to reality because I actually do need to clean the floors. Um, and, and so I'll just put down tasks like that, that need to get done sometime during the week. So these two categories, you know, these are my, my, my personal projects. And then these are just like life tasks, you know, grocery shopping, uh, doing the laundry. And sometimes I do, you know, washing and drying the laundry and then putting away the laundry. Cause as we all know, those are two very separate things that often don't get done close enough together um, in time. So, so that's how I'll kind of like try to organize everything. Sometimes I'll put like an estimate of the amount of time that a certain project will take me. So I might be like, oh, for client X, I think that, you know, even though it's a it's an ongoing project, I can probably only work on that for like three hours before I start to lose my mind. Um, because I'm more of the kind of person who I like to go from like project to project. And I like to do a lot of different things versus like, I'm going to sit down and do one thing all day. That sounds like so boring to me, <laughs> which is also probably one of the reasons why I, I enjoy being a freelance writer. Cause I have all these different clients, all these different projects going on. The second part to my organization strategy is I always have a planner so I always have a planner and um, I will plug in things to my planner, the projects I need to get done. Um, and then I will plug in like if I have an appointment in here, if I have um, like I'm meeting up with somebody, anything like that. And I'll do out more like um, daily schedules in, in here, like more specific daily schedules. I don't really schedule things like to the hour uh, because I find that to be, that usually doesn't work in reality and it just becomes frustrating because then you feel like you're behind all the time. Um, so I just like say, you know, I'm going to spend this amount of time on that thing and that amount of time on that thing. Of course, if I'm meeting up with someone, then I put that time in there and and I'll just have like, you know, I want to finish this project before I meet up with that person. And I want to work on this project after I meet up with that person. 
Um, so something kind of like a little more fluid like that. That's one of the benefits to being a freelance writer really is that you have that flexibility in your schedule. You get to decide how close those deadlines are together. So I just, I, I like to give myself a little bit of space. If I can deliver something early, great. I'll do that for a client. I like to make kind of realistic deadlines that give me enough space in between projects that I can make sure that I'm doing a really good job for the client. Because honestly, I take pride in my work and I feel like, you know, my work represents me and that I also want to do right by the client who's paid me. Uh, Just a little my ethical philosophy there, I guess. So that's one of the benefits is definitely the flexibility I would say another benefit is that, you know, you can choose if you want to have like a really heavy week and then have a really light week after that. Sometimes you can't choose because clients give you work and you just, it's better if you can keep doing the work that a client gives you, um, then they'll get the sense that you're available, that you're excited about the projects that, that they're giving to you. Um, but you can definitely tell clients, you know, next week. Uh, like Thanksgiving is coming up, I'm going to tell clients that the second half of Thanksgiving week, I will not be doing any freelance work because I'm just going to be, you know, cooking my turkey, getting ready for Thanksgiving, just trying to enjoy that holiday, taking a break. I'll probably still be working on my NaNoWriMo stuff, but that's a kind of like just fun personal projects that don't feel like work to me. Like it's up to you if you like want to take on clients who are more, um, shall we say, demanding. Some clients will be like that. They'll be like, they'll always demand, you know, 24 hour or less turnaround on stuff. If you're somebody who kind of thrives off of that and you like to do that sort of thing, you are welcome to do that. I do not do that. I I almost never promise a 24 hour turnaround to anybody because I'm like, you know, who knows what's going to happen. And I'm also working on this other stuff. It's probably not going to be my highest quality work if I do that. Like sometimes I like to kind of mentally prepare for a project and like before I get really get into it. That's a little bit of like the pluses, I would say, to freelancing. I kind of like left off in my story, but let me get back to it. I think in the first year of freelancing, I think I did about 18,000. Now, that's 18,000 after all the Upwork fees. So if I wasn't working on Upwork, if I had found all those clients myself, then I probably would have gotten much more. I don't know. It probably was more like 24,000. But Upwork takes a chunk of cash, let's be honest. But the benefit to being on Upwork is that a lot of people go there for freelancers and you can find good clients there. There's plenty of people who will just pay you $10 to write 5,000 words, which I immediately decline those jobs. I'm like, I'm not running a charity here. But there's other ones who you know, you can make $30, $40 an hour. I've, I've gotten jobs like that before. You can make several thousand from ghostwriting a book. Those are, those are real figures from my own experience. And then if you have any kind of workplace experience, then you can bring that to the table too. If you're like, oh, I wrote for a golf magazine for like, you know, 25 years, then People, are, people might pay you like $100 for a 500-word article um, about golfing. You know, just a little bit about my experience. If you have any questions about freelancing, then I would love to answer those for you. If you want to hear more about my story or um, if you want to ask me questions about like, what do I do when a client does this thing or doesn't do this thing or I feel like I've dealt with it all at this point, um, having done like two full years of freelancing and worked with like so many different kinds of clients on so many different kinds of projects, you know, like everything from blogs and um, writing like SEO material to, like I said, ghostwriting books and for websites and for, you know, programs and um, for children, (laughs) children's books. Um, lots and lots of different types of writing. Um, 
So I even wrote for like YouTube channels too. I wrote like scripts for YouTube channels too. So, um, yeah, so that's anyways, that's about my experience and, um, my story and I hope that's in some way helpful to you. Um, and it, it, it has its highs and lows for sure. It still has stressful moments, just like working in the workplace. Um, but if you need a job that you can do from home and you want the flexibility and you're really willing to advocate for yourself, you need to be, you need to be able to do that. Well, you need to be able to communicate extremely well, um, to make it work. You need to be a little bit of a go-getter. I am, you know, naturally more of a type B personality, but I can turn that on and be like, I'm going to go get me some work. I'm going to land this client. I'm going to beat up my competition, you know, <laughs> those sorts of things. Um, because I want it because I want to do this. I want to keep doing it. Um, so I'm highly motivated to do that. So um, anyways, thanks for listening. <laughs>